we'll call the meeting to order at um, 7.10. You guys need to call yours individually or? Oh, uh, we're only we two people. Quorum. We don't even have a quorum. Like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, we didn't want it, hi, so here we that. are. Yeah. Uh, we are Mark and I are yeah. representing the council select board. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Should we introduce ourselves yeah, to the she camera? Can, she can just write in for it, okay. so you can just write who's here from Callus and East Welfare. Maybe we'll share. the left wingers, Callus is the right wingers. Bruce, <laughs> our he's right down the middle. For, the, for the sake of the people watching on TV later on, why don't we just go around the table? Sure. Hi, I'm Judith Dillon. I'm here on behalf of the um, East Montpelier Select Board. Carla and I are a member of the East Montpelier Select Board. Uh, I, I'm sorry, can, can you repeat your sure. last name? Uh, Dillon, D-I-L-L-O-N. Sorry, I'm, yep, even with the and hearing aids, I can't seem to hear. I'm muffled yeah. too, so. Yeah. Okay. Bruce Johnson. Oh, uh, I know, I missed him. Oh. <laughs> I'm Carl Etnayer. East Montpelier. You want to spell that last name for me, please? Uh, e T N I E R. I'm Rick Heen. K E H N E. Moon. Collar Select Board. E. K E H N E. Okay. I'm Sharon, S H A R O N. And I have two last names. Win, W I N N, no hyphen, F like Frank, A N N O N. And I'm from the Callus Select Board. And I'm Albert Petrella, and I'm with the East Montpelier. Ty Roland, East Montpelier Fire Chief. <coughs> and Judy Woodbeck. He's oh, secretary. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry, you're with the, the fire department? Yes. Okay. <laughs> the math wasn't working um, for me when I heard board, but that's not, that's not correct. Okay. Go ahead. Tom. So on our, on our packs here, we'll start with the financials. Um, you guys have the, we'll just start right as they're in order sequentially. So we have the balance sheets. Uh, and uh, if you look at the balance sheets on the top, the accounts are doing pretty well. Capital accounts are pretty healthy right now. Um, you can see down in the liabilities, the two liabilities for the rescue pumper loan and the ambulance loan. Any questions on those? That's pretty straightforward. Can you, well, yeah. I'm not really questions, just, oh, I see. There it is. I found what I was looking for. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so we're good on, good on page one. Mm -hmm. Moving over to page two on the um, profit and loss for, versus actual for the ambulance. I'm going to have to start wearing glasses so I can mm -hmm. read these things. The font's really small. Mm. It is. Uh, if you look down, I guess really the highlighted one is down in the, the revenue side, down on the left, um, about three quarters of the way down, it says ambulance insurance revenue and expenses, and then the revenue to date that's been collected is the date of this, and again, this is back to the reconciled as of February, end of February. Uh, was 95,000 to that date. Mm. So, um, and I think this last month we transferred almost 23,000 into it. So, we're in a pretty good run this year so far, in line with what it should be. In line with, in, in line with what you're expected? Yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, calls are, call volumes are up some, so the revenue is um, keeping pace with that as it should. And, which is always good. Uh, you can see down in the bottom of that, there's the, the COVID vaccine clinics and how much we've paid out of that. We're actually in our second round. Um, we're in our second $100,000 contract with the state for 
helping to assist with vaccination clinics and um, testing clinics. I think that's starting to wane off a little bit as time goes on, but the uh, contracts are still active currently. So we do have some people that are still putting some hours in at clinics, but as they slowly shut down, I think that will be mostly done in the next month or so. Yeah. Well, uh, is that kind of a is that a net washer? Does that end up being a revenue generator in terms of? It no, good? it's it's um, a net wash. We're we're making a, a little bit of it to, after the overhead, but the most of what the overhead coverage on our side are paying like the insurance costs mm -hmm. and um, the tax portion of it and everything. The um, the people doing the clinics are actually being paid fifty dollars an hour, so they're being paid a, a significantly higher mm -hmm. wage scale sure. than typical for it because of what they're doing. <coughs> and then uh, yeah, so that's covering the other expenses for basically internal in house. Yeah, got you. So it may wash us out that we, we may clear a couple thousand at the end yeah, of that. Basically, you know, but most yeah. of that's going to be in extra administrative costs and things. And yeah, we've been running that. If you remember, we've been running that as a total separate payroll mm -hmm. line, so we can really track that separately. So. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Any questions on that page? Okay. Hearing none. Hang on, um, Taiwan. Uh, just a broad question. What is there? Some question that we should. Is there some question we should be asking, or something? Is there anything here that you're the least bit concerned about? That no, you're, that you're you know wondering, got your fingers crossed, nobody's going to notice. No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> I don't operate you, that way. I, 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 I just wanted to. All. That's my. That's my. Um, Wondering what I should be asking that I'm not asking questions. No, nope. you can see on the right hand side where you're at percentage wise in your budget on the total expenses line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A day at 63.9, if you look at the time frame of the year, mm -hmm. you know, we're in line where that should be. And again, you see fluctuations just throughout the year that may hit different high markers versus when. You know, insurance payments may be due or dispatch payment may be due, so it may spike and then it will drop back and fall in line again, then it will spike. And so we're in we're in good place on that. Is it 53 or 63? 63. 63. Nine. Nine. Okay. 63.9. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And if you have the black light, you can see the information you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is very handy for budgets and survey numbers. Okay, so we're good on that page? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, so um, profit and loss budget versus actual fire. That's actually a little bigger. It's a little easier to read. A lot, a lot of exciting things on this slide. Again, looking at the going to the total expense line at the 76%. Uh, we have a few items, some firefighting supplies. Again, you know, that's just an expense ratio. We, we put in some um, specific tech gear that we purchased for ambulance personnel and regular gear for firefighting supplies. This driven those numbers. Um, our building number on station two is up a little bit. And again, that's in large part because of the uh, service work and it was done on mechanical systems within the building it was time for a, a, a large scale uh, maintenance change of filters and upkeep on some of the systems it's not a regular annual cost and things so that was we're driving some of those pieces Our water valve pump failed on us so we'll have that replaced mm -hmm. right and the fire pump needed some extra maintenance because law says every Five or six years, you got to replace all your gauges and different things, and that came up too. Fire pump in the building? Yeah. What what's the fire pump in the building? Right, the Runs building is protected for oh, sprinkler system. Okay. Yeah. And the um, oh, it's personal. Sorry, is it the personal gear? Personal gear. Okay, that's right. right. So that would have been, you know, the equipment that the firefighters. Right, yeah, let's turn up here and things. And what, what did you say the firefighting supplies was? 
uh, firefighting supplies is we've had some holes replaced, and it's just mm -hmm. that's all of your operational equipment that you use. Maybe SC, we did um, SCBA service work this year that we have to do, so we did some extra repair, repairs on those. Mm -hmm. It's uh, all your tools and anything you're purchasing, the pumps. Mm -hmm. you know, so we bought the pump for the UTV, the high pressure um, off road pump for the forestry piece of it, and things. Mm -hmm. So, the items like that is what falls into that category. Is that is that stuff that would have been unanticipated or could not have been anticipated? Um, so it, it's a combination of both. Some is anticipated into the budgets, and then there's other things that do come into it. There were unbudgeted pieces that were added. Mm -hmm. Is that do you think that line item should be increased next year, just to, or is this just do you think it's more of a blip? And I think you, you you know there's just occasional spikes that come into it based on yeah. what we're doing. Sure, I get it. And yeah, everything you know, we we expanded some of the equipment on the forestry side with putting the UTV in service and everything. Mm -hmm. um, so that's not the normal. It's going to happen every year, and um, you know, like with the new truck coming online next year, there will be hoses and things, but that will kind of fall into the truck envelope. So I don't I don't foresee large scale um, major equipment purchases. We've been up, trying to upgrade and keep in line with those as we go along so that we don't get hit with big sure, yeah. surpluses. We are going to see, uh, like our SCBA, which is a self-containing breather apparatus we wear, is going to take a big hit in the next couple of years, but that is covered into the capital side of things that we're budgeting for that because that's going to be probably a $130,000 bill for that to replace those when time comes. Yeah, you talked about that in the last meeting. Yeah, so you know, so the bigger, the really big items, we're covering in the capital side of things to there, and it, you know, and then the smaller ones that you just get hit with here and there, it's more operational. Yeah, so, yeah, I got it. Any other questions on that? No. Ooh. Okay. So again, everything seems to be holding its own trends for where we need to be this time of year. And so on the, the next page there, um, property loss versus actual, again, the fall in, on the fire. The, in terms of capital activity, when you look at the expenses on the trucks, that is the actual truck payments, that that relates back into um, the loans that come out of the regular revenue from the ambulance revenue to pay those. And I believe at this point we've collected all the revenue from the two towns for the years. And what's the you now? Because you don't, don't according to the... Uh, well, not, we not have from, one come in after February. Okay. Yeah, so this is reconciled as of the end of February. But, right. The last one came, what, just a week or so ago, not too mm -hmm. long ago. It's no fun if we can't pick on Callus for pain late. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what's the 44000 in extra income? Or other income, rather? Um, I cannot answer that directly for you right now, actually, without look, being able to look it up. And then we'll have the access to it right here. Okay. It's a significant chunk of change, whatever it is. Um, well, I would assume that some of that's the capital activity you're seeing coming in because of the monies from capital side. We'd have to, we'd have to pull that on the line on the report. Yeah, okay. It's nothing new. It's not anything that popped up after the hours there a number. Okay. Not specifically that one, but it is always numbers yeah. there. Yeah. Any other questions on that page? <clears throat> Hearing none. Okay. So that kind of, the, the, I think that's the last page of financials. So any, any before we move off of the financials, uh, we kind of covered the ambulance revenue in number two on the agenda. And the map. So um, anything else? Any other questions on the financial piece? If you're satisfied with those? Okay. So moving on to the next page, which talks about the call statistics. And this was from July to December of FY22. With a grand total of 398 
in that six month period. And how does this compare the distribution of calls among the towns? How does that compare to previous years? Uh, oh, I, I can't tell you that specifically. I guess we can let's see what else is in here for the charts. I don't have a comparison. Let me see which one to pick it. I don't have a comparison I can give you from that from year to year. We can pull that, but it, I can tell you overall we are up this year. Um, within the first two and a half months, we were up almost fifty percent. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Hmm. What do you, do you have any theories as to what you would attribute that to? Or? Sick people. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily all COVID, you know, mm -hmm. but I mean, yeah, no, I think just overall the, just the demand is high, you know, we see those trends with aging populations and things and, you know, individuals take, you know, cycles of life that increase call volumes to them specifically. And then overall in towns, you know, it can be, <clears throat> it can be a number of things, you know, number of car accidents can impact that, those numbers in terms of how many people in a car you know, you may put five or six people on instantly, right, in a situation like that. Um, and overall, overall they're up? I mean, it would be, to Judith's point, I was going to ask the same thing, what are the, what are the trends? It would be interesting. Well, everything's up. Fire, fire is up a little bit, but not, not nearly what ambulance is. So, so, but but hmm. even at a more granular level, um, from town to town, up. Do you see trends? <clears throat> Some towns, not other towns. It it's it's such a fluctuating marker. I mean, it can be one week more in one town, it can be the next week more in another town. So it really, the the trends don't necessarily equal themselves out to say, Calus is running higher all the time. Calus may run higher for a couple of weeks, and then they may drop off and go quiet for a couple of weeks. And so in the overall, you know, it's just, it's an elevated number we look at. And so, so over time, though, outside of the six month window over the past three to five years, what that's, I think, I don't know, I've, I interpreted your question kind of in that vein, Judith, not, not at the micro trend. High, but at kind of the macro trend, like, oh, look, um, you know, we were to look Woodbury's at. always at four, and the, and the drivers, the drivers, what are the drivers of, if it's, is it, you said ambulance, okay, that's a driver, are there drivers among the towns over time, and, and over, over bigger spans of time, not weeks, but years? That, I, I mean, that's, it's a little hard to quantify in that capacity, because fires fluctuate, you know, we hit um, four or five structure fires right on top of each other within, you know, two weeks at the beginning of the year. And then we may go six months and not see a structure fire that we go to. So it's a little hard to quantify that in the, in the broad spectrum of one type of incident versus another. Um, you know, car accidents show large fluctuations and things that overall, if you looked at the five-year growth rate, I would say we were probably... 15 to 20 percent higher in gross call volume increase over the last five years. You know, and I don't, and I don't anticipate this entire year in May stay on the same pace that we've seen in the first few months. Um, it's just a, it. It's hard to at some level. Maybe, maybe it's not at a town level at this local level, but at some level that. That data is what is what drives um, public service campaigns, other you know interventions. If you know that you're seeing a trend in a town or in a particular line within a town over a period of time, that that's information that at some level becomes useful. Yeah, and I'm wondering. Um, I mean, there's no way to prevent a structure fire. No, I get that. Yeah. There's no, I mean, I, 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 I hear what you're saying for certain types of thinking. formats, but I don't think some of that formula would work the same way you're anticipating in something like this because of the, these are the unpredictable incidents. I, yeah, well, I can't tell you if I put signs on the road that say, hey, slow down, it's icy today, there's going to be less car accidents because it's icy today. 
Yeah. Right. The the other response to that would be sometimes you, look, it's not only really that, but it's, you got to put more salt on the road to, or whatever to keep the ice down, or people don't drive. Okay. So point. So point taken. If we have that data to see the trend, that oh look, you know, Calus is up by X amount over a period of of five years. That's a in. You know, if we wanted to get really geeky about it, we could get some statistician to actually do the statistical word I can't say, statistical analysis on whether that's a significant trend, you know, by a p factor of what, and then you say, okay, look, this actually is meaningful, not according to any of us in this room, but the statistician that is the you know the doing a project for the economics class. And then you say, okay, why is that? Because that's where change comes from. That's where, that's where intervention comes from, is looking at the data. And you can't look at data for just a six month period. Well, you have, you, you can go back in your town records for every meeting we've had, we give you these reports every year. You can take all the data and put it together and look at the trends for calls to each one. Okay. I, I don't see, on um, our side of it, I don't see necessarily, and I'm not downplaying what you're asking for, but I don't see an intrinsic value to us with some of that information. If I can quantify that the roads are icier more times in a year, causing more car accidents, it's irrelevant, right? The accidents are going to occur, we're going to respond. I can have accidents on dry days, I can have accidents on icy days. Okay. I'm, um, I'm not going to argue with you about whether data is or is not a useful thing. I'm not saying data is not a useful thing, but in terms of, you, you know, when I look at years from year to year on structure fires, there's not necessarily an educational wave we're going to put out that's going to change whether a structure fire occurs at somebody's house or not, right? We put out messages to people, you know, and if it's, uh, whether it's from wood burning situation or it's an electrical issue in an old house, those are, those are things that don't necessarily get identified sometimes for people until those moments. You know, there's nothing that, preliminary, if I told you that, look, your house is old enough, you should go have an electrician come in and inspect your house. You're not going to have an electrician come in and inspect your house and redo all your electrical wiring because, I, you know, I've suggested it's a risk factor. Um, just going to the point of um, the information is out there. So I, I'm relatively, or I'm newer on the board, so I, I wouldn't have the files or the records. Would they be in your reports, or would I look in my um, town? You, I mean, East Mount Ferry has them all. Mm -hmm. We have them all. Uh -huh. um, but it's also in the town reports all the way back. Yep. Mm -hmm. right. okay. um, but we also have them in the office. If you, Ty, you know what I'm more interested in on that is, is how, you know, the, with these increased, like, ambulance call? Right. Uh, how is that impacting, like the staffing levels? Is that is it still very manageable? Is that we're holding our own? Yeah, I mean, so we that, we have days. We had a day just the other day where we were out two ambulances and the third one dumped right on top of us. You know, we were able to dump the patient at the hospital and take the third call. So those are good days. You know, there is other days where we're staffing one and can't staff the second one right behind it. Maybe because we're out in fire. Just before you guys came in, my trucks are coming back with guys on the structure fire in Mount Fair, and then the ambulance is out at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know, so again, resources are, are going full on. We're covering 99% of all the calls. Um, I won't say there's, you know, typically we're not, not covering fire calls. There's some ambulance calls that we have to turn over just because of timing and, you know, maybe resources or we're just stretched out and maxed at that point for a variety of different calls. And are we seeing the trends where there's more and more doubled up calls? Yes. You know, what's the driver for that? No, no, there's no driver, it's just the time of somebody's emergent need and addressing that at the time. It's more the consistency over time if that's what right. drives the how you staff and how you right. size. So. The, the last time we were here, you were talking about hiring new folks. I'm just wondering if you've been successful in that effort and how that's going. It's an ebb and flow. They, they come and they go. <laughs> we lost the few we gained. We've, uh, yeah, we've got two medics, two new medics that have come in. Um, again, we, we have to go through a transitional training process with these guys and getting them off the ground where they can fully be cleared and vetted from the hospital to run on their own. Um, we've got a couple of people in classes that once they finish their classes, you know, they'll be coming online full into it. 
So in terms of staffing, are you down, up? Um, do you want to? We're fairly neutral. I mean, we would always like to have more mm -hmm. staffing, you know, but again, it's, and I, we'll talk about that a little bit later. I've got the re reports I'll give to you that you guys can have the data analysis from the state and how they rate the EMS system within the state. And um, it's an interesting read. So, but you know, overall, I, everybody is seeing the trends of increased calls, especially on the emergency service and on the side of it. So Kai, you said something earlier that made me wonder whether I understand what a call is. So could you just start at the beginning? What is a call? What qualifies as a call to put a, a tick here? Every incident that goes out, so if I get called for an ambulance response, that's a call. If I go to a fire call, that's a call. So if you send one truck or three trucks, does it make a difference? Is it still one call? It's, it's the same, it's right, it's individual calls. Well, so these guys were at two different incidents. The ambulance was at a medical call right. in East Montpelier, the fire truck was at a fire call mutually in the city of Montpelier. But if you have a structure fire and you send all your fire trucks and an ambulance, is that one ambulance call and one fire call? The ambulance and fire show differently because they're doing two different functions. Right, so, so if the ambulance goes to a call and then fire is called to come in to help them, that is a, a fire assist to the ambulance yeah. and it reflects that way so we can um, travel. So you can see that on your sheet if you look under, well, Calus is the first one on the sheet. You can see medical assist and it says fire. Mm -hmm. That would be fire personnel under a fire tone coming to assist the ambulance for whatever reasons. Mm -hmm. So if you have five fire trucks at a structure fire, how many calls? That's that? one call. Thank you. The only the only quantifier for that is patient patient contacts or individual calls. So like if we went to a school bus accident and we interacted with thirty students on that bus, that would be thirty calls because each student would get their own number so that it's even track if you okay. independent. Even if you sent two ambulances. They're reported yeah. as individuals to in the state's data system. Okay, that's helpful. Are you? Are we seeing increase like opioid or overdose yeah. activity too? Mm -hmm. And we can usually see the waves of it when it comes through and starts to hit the cities. It's next out here, but some of the city effort activity is moving farther outside of the city limits. So it's a little easier to move around. Interesting. Yeah, so we're seeing the elevated numbers of those. Any other questions on the calls or statistics or Why would there be... Um, Which page are you looking at? I'm looking at the uh, East Mount, the first one of the call statistics. Okay. Um, in Calus, the fire slash MVA is equal to the medical slash MVA. So that, that's motor vehicle crashes, right? Mm -hmm. So and they're e so they're equal. Why would they be uh, more, like three times more, um, medical MBAs in East Montpelier than, than fire. How does that work? Because I, I was under the impression every time that there was a car crash, or a vehicle crash, you sent out a fire truck as well. Did I get that wrong? Right. Well, they they would reflect on their own. Um, or maybe that's the case where the patient numbers. Well, are it, may be, the call. it may be a case of where you had multiple patients and yeah. the car is going to reflect that medical yeah. MBA number to be higher. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <clears throat> which is different than just the straight medical. So the medical MBAs are not also within that medical number. Th they're, those are separate. They're totally separate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So Ty, going back to my questions earlier, is it that your system will only generate this data in one six month band? Is it not possible to look at six month bands over time? Except to manually compile it. Yeah, that would be man, have to be manually compiled. Right. 
Right. Or we have the data into it and on a sheet. Just drop it in an Excel sheet. Man. But I mean, you could take it and you could put a sheet <coughs> next to sheet and look at them and say, oh, okay, this is it's the easy line comparison. Sure, sure, I could. I absolutely could do that. I have those skills. Are you asking us to do it for you? I will put I'm it on my free time. No, I didn't ask you to do it for okay. me. I'm surprised that you're not interested in that data. I will say that much. I'm surprised. I'm not asking you to do it for me. I've made the point, and you don't, you don't feel it would be useful for your purposes. And I get that, because your job is to respond to the incident. But for other, other purposes, or for purposes of, you know, from a organizational oversight um, budget future, level future and future trend planning, made, yeah. yeah, where we spend our money. To your point on, you know, wh where where are the icy corners? Where where just what are what are the drivers of the expenses? Mm -hmm. Having having that data, and you're right. I'm sure you've provided it, and we could compile it. Um, well, the, that data is not going to show you an icy corner on the, the state highway. And do we have time to go lobby the state highway to go salt a corner more? No way. It's just, it's but just that, like that time. Not necessarily you, but maybe the people within our communities or the separate communities. Um, or similarly, with respect to the medical, that there's more you know, people in East Montpelier with medical calls does that track the demographic, or does, is that an age thing? There are that could depend on just how sick you are. I could come to your house ten times if you're really sick, or you're in your dying, ending of life stages, and I could respond to you a lot, where I only saw Carl once. Mm -hmm. right? So there's no way to predict or forecast or change the outcome of going to your house ten times versus going to Carl's once. Because I may see Carl once, and I may never see him again for ten years. I might be where, where, I'd <laughs> see, where I'd see the the the, the advantages, and it's not in the small picture so much for like that that micro. It's in the macro about how much staffing, how much equipment, how much facility we're going to need over time. You know, if we see these growth projections. We've got some years to think about it then, and then right. you know where the break points are. Where okay, we've got to add another ambulance, and we have to have, have more teams to team it. You know where where what are those break points where we've got to expand our resources, staff, our staff resources and equipment mm -hmm. to be able to handle that. To me, that's a trend information that's really valuable. Well, and I think there's some well, of that, and you'll see in these reports that they look at overall from the the state levels, but that's one of those. It's a little bit hard to forecast. I think as clearly as you think, well, I'm because you could have you're right, you could have a way. you could have a system breakdown somewhere that mm -hmm. an organization just drops out, right? And all of a sudden, that punches a huge hole in the system. Right. That then is uh, again that would fall in the unforecasted True. You know, that, measure of that's, change. That's it's, the unpredictable side. Right. I'm talking about the predictable side where you, if we see you know we see these growth, and well, maybe if that's value, maybe it isn't. I would. I do know what it's like to be caught in the moment where all of a sudden you cross a threshold and you're not prepared. You gotta come there's a lot of money that has to go out to right. those steps are, are big expense steps. So better if you can see them and plan for them. Right. And that's my that would be my concern. <clears throat> but the the data, I think that that looking at data over time backs up the the anecdotal perspective that you have that, you know, Carl, Carl is one person, yes, and and that's a that's a one data point and possibly an outlier. But if a, there's a systems, you said, did you say fail or so something falls apart in the system? Right. And that drives a that drives a result. Having that trend data shows you it backs up it backs up the observation that there was an event because here we've got all this trend and then oh boom. What happened there, and how do you prevent it? Because now we can see the impact, mm -hmm. and it's it's not just budgeting. I and maybe maybe even in our in our small half a dozen communities, we're too small to be thinking about prevention. But understanding the trends at least invites that conversation about other ways of of not just responding but intervening and preventing. 
from a public health perspective. That's kind of where I'm coming from. And that's not, I'm not saying it's yeah. your job. I'm not saying it's your job, but you're, it's, you have the intro. Yeah. I'm yeah. not saying that at it's, all. It's, it's, I'm yeah. not saying that yeah. at all. That's not at all what I'm suggesting. All I'm, all I'm noticing is that you're the ones with the data that would inform a public health conversation if we wanted to have it. That's really all I'm saying. But I think the other, the other part of it, though, in terms of Rick's question, in terms of like budgeting and things, right? If you look at it and say, okay, you know, in terms of more equipment and things, it's not necessarily more equipment, right? Because I may have 10 hours a day, let's just use that as an example, that says I could run more calls mm -hmm. in that 10 hours of the day if the calls came in that 10 hours of the day, right? Because the ambulance is available, the crew's here, right. they're ready to go. But that, that's an unpredictable measure to create of filling that 10 hour window versus when I fall into the two or three overlaps and then having to increase staffing to cover that two or three sure. overlap, which falls into maybe four hours of the day. That's an that's a unpredictable <coughs> vision of how do you fund that and finance that and change that? Well, you fund that and you finance that by adding you know secondary crews and things but if the secondary crews are sitting you, you know without the call volume to support it's continuously all the way right. through it becomes it. very expensive to do that well that's why i said you know it, these aren't linear progression they, they tend to be steps right right and you have to figure out what that threshold of affordability and utilization is right. you know that kind of takes a close look at data and like right now it's not equipment the equipment could run a lot more. Yeah. You know, but it's just. Well, it's how it, you know, it's when they happen. I mean, it, are you having, it's the number of calls you're getting at one time. It's, so it's that, and that, that starts, you can drown in data at some point if you're not careful. Right. I get it. But part of this is iterative, especially at this scale. It's pretty small. So it's not, you can kind of see it and feel it as you go. But the thing is, that, you know, if you, you don't, I think where it's helpful is if you can get some idea of where those step points are in advance, because they aren't cheap when you do hit, hit those. You know, then because you're going to a whole new stage of operation. Right. Let's take your example, Ty, of someone who has ten medical calls in a fairly short period of time. Do you have any way of knowing whether they are connected, for example, with Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice? I mean, I would, but I can't share that information with you. No, I understand, I understand that. But I'm wondering if, if you could look at that person and say, hey, you aren't connected with Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice. If you had regular visits from a nurse, uh, then maybe some of these emergency calls could be avoided. Not, not to um, us, but say that to the, the patient. Conceptually, that's a nice idea, but it doesn't work that way. Okay. We would not be disconnected from those calls just because there's a nurse going into the facilities. No, I'm not talking about facilities, I'm talking about talking somebody at home. Sorry, into somebody's home. Yeah. yeah. There may be nursing that, that still goes in in those situations, but that doesn't mean that the ambulance is disconnected from those calls. Or I'm not talking about being disconnected, I'm talking about somebody having improvements to their health because they're seeing somebody outside of an ambulance coming to their, their door yeah, I, I, frequently. I guess I'm a little confused on the road you guys want to go down with that of trying to, now you're going to medically manage people within their town in, the, in, in their own medical conditions? I guess I'm, 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 I'm not sure trying how to understand advocate. how you work. Yeah, we, we address what comes in front of us day by day, minute by minute, right? I, I don't know. Some of this stuff is not as predictable as you guys are trying to make it to be, I guess. And even predicting timelines of more calls occur at this time of day versus this time of day. That may be good for a, a two month period, but then it just falls way off and it, the trends change for the next two months just by nature of how it goes. Um, these, these are really, if you look at statistics, I mean, statistical modules work big. The bigger they are, the better they work. And we think these are very small. Right. These are very small groups to be, you know, so there is a lot of fluctuation. I get with large gap with large gaps in between that are, you know. Quite, yeah. I mean, I don't know. The question really is for us because we don't really know anything about your end of this. It's like, do you see patterns that you would 
that are worth. The patterns we really see are the overall, just the continual growth. And, and again, that goes in stages. Sometimes we see large bursts of it and then it settles back a little bit and then it may launch forwards, you know, and it may never go back to where it was, right? It always is, has it's a grain to it, yeah. but it may jump forwards and then it rebounds backwards a little bit and then it goes, you know. Um, can, can I make a request and you don't have to do it, just a request, but going forward when we get this sheet again, I'm wondering if we can see the columns for like the past two two years. How just so I'm, that you had said I was gonna make that suggestion for yeah, well, it, we it, have it, to it's go. I mean, yeah, we that's a great you know that. you can I, I can mean, give you the sheet separately if you'd like for those years. I can give you year to year to year so you can look at them and compare yeah. otherwise yeah. Rusta could put them Yeah no that'd, that'd, be, that'd be that'd be that'd be great. Well they're that'd not great. set up in the system we would have to do that. that's like even with with or the inner town budgets, we'd like to do that. That gives you some trend information. We see that it gives you the comparables. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So yeah, it helps. That helps a lot. Yeah, I, I guess with that though, certain trends aren't going to necessarily show your budget reflections. I guess. Mm, no, I guess yeah. we got it. We got it. All right. Any other questions on the call logs? On the next one, um, fire department, July through December ambulance. What are you looking at? Which page? It's not that's numbered. That's it's called Mont East Montpelier Fire Department FY22 July through December ambulance transport statistics. Yep. And um, the second row is pounds, and then the column labels, no or yes. What, what does no or yes for column labels? It's a yes transporter and no transport. Thank you. So I spend the same not the same time totally because I'm not doing the actual transport, but I tend to spend the same effort to come out to your house for a no transport as I do for a transport. The only difference is they don't get paid for no transport. Could, I'm sorry, could you just explain generally what you mean by transport? Just so a transport is I load you in the back of the ambulance and I take you to the hospital. A no transport is I come to your house because you called me to come to your house at 2 a.m. in the morning and then you decide you don't want to go to the hospital. So then I have you sign a paper that says, I would not like to go to the hospital at this time, and we leave you, and we go home, and go back to bed, and you some, take care of yourself. If somebody has fallen and cannot get themselves up by themselves, and you guys come and help we, them up we and may back into bed, assist. that's no, no transport. That's, that maybe, it depends on the, you know, again, that's a generalized statement. Right? Well, my, my not, example was you put them back into bed, and then sometimes, and yeah. sometimes we take them based on. No, I'm, I'm just giving an example, Ty. Yeah. And trying to understand what no yeah. transport is, and you don't get paid for it. Right. right. Yeah. Or you go to a motor vehicle accident, okay. possible injuries, and you get there, and nobody's hurt. They don't want to go to yeah. hospital. That's yep. three forms or four forms we got to fill out. Yep. Saying that they're saying everything's okay. Yep. Sign here. Okay, have a good day. And it's always to Central Vermont. You never take them to UVM. Or uh, we go to St. John's very okay. sometimes. We go to Morrisville. Okay. We do go to the UVM location, depending on the type of call. Okay, so it's not necessarily a geographic indicator. It's the type of call that would influence. Typically, go. we would go to Central Vermont Medical Center. Mm -hmm. We have the authorities with, depending on the crew that's on the truck, we can bypass the hospital and go direct to UVM based on the nature of the call. We may be in Woodbury for a call, which then the request is for that patient who wants to go to Morrisville. So we may end up going to Morrisville with that patient. And St. Jay would be? We can be any, anywhere over Marshfield, out farther to go to St. Jay if people request that. That tends to be the less likely direction we go to, but you know, we've, we probably went to Copley last year, five, six, seven times, something like that. <laughs> okay. Did you see a moose? <laughs> so it's a long drive. Um, so, yeah. 
Any other questions on those? No. So, and if you look at that, um, you know, the second page of the, their first couple of months, January to February. I can have a question for you, actually. You know, and it's, how, how are you reimbursed? On, is that based on what insurance companies allow, or do you base it on your total hauling, you know, your overall cost divided by the number of mileage? No. I mean, so, how, Right, so every every call is dictated by services provided. Um, we would be, we're reimbursed for mileage. Mileage is not touched with any deductible. Uh, the rate set typically within the area or statewide. Um, that doesn't change that frequently for how much it is per loaded mile. <clears throat> and then in terms of the type of calls, if I come to your house, and you know you get oxygen oxygen has a flat rate number that gets applied to the bill if i start iv access onto you it's a flat so rate it's, if it's, i administer drugs it. it starts to take it from an als to an als2 call depending on how many drugs i administer to you um, you know it doesn't necessarily in the overall scope of it it's replacing bandages and things like that but if i use 10 bandages on you and I use two bandages on Judith for the same type of call just for whatever reasons were necessary. There's no comparative difference in that, you know, she used less bandages and you used more. You don't get billed higher rate. It's, no, it's, it's all it's, falling in. And then, so once the bill is generated for the entirety of what the costs are, the insurance then takes their whack at it and pays the percentage of it, Medicare, Medicaid, they all reduce those. Forty percent, approximately, on those. So, you know, and then again, you have the uninsured, right? They, you know, we don't put our taxpayers to collections. That was decided a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So, you, you have uninsured payment. I could come to your house ten times and give you a thousand dollar bill, and you're not paying it, and we're not receiving any money. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just how it is. You may not have the ability to pay. Or the insurance covers, you know, different people's insurances have different grades of what they cover. You know, you may have a higher deductible than Judith does, right? And we may not be able to collect the deductibles because you don't have the ability to pay personally above and beyond what the insurance pays. So that deductible becomes uncollected. That could be up to 25% or so of a call. But yet the cost out the door are always the same right they are what they are they are what they are right yeah. so so you're expending money so you know some calls you make a little bit some calls you lose a lot and i don't think there's you know and that turns on what your population is in town you know as you see more and more aging populations and things you're going to see more medicare medicaid patients and you know the, we have a reasonable level of uninsured people that are, you know, in our towns for whatever reasons. Um, but. Did that answer that question? Back to that. We'll tie the capital plan. I didn't make a copy of that because you guys were just given copies of that in December. Um, the striker power load system is installed in the truck and, and working good. People are happy with that. And, um, and, and this is just something. Um, you know, I read through, I think it's just got some helpful information you guys might appreciate reading. Um, the other piece of it that I wanted to draw together with this is it talks about, you know, funding and gaps and things. And overall, I think within our town system and our system of how we operate, you know, we're, 
we're funded pretty strongly and the town support is pretty strong out there. And so I think that's part of the takeaway of it is when they talk about, you know, building stronger systems and what does it require and things, it really takes the support and backing in the towns to make that happen. There's a lot of towns that don't really have a structured uh, system that's within them. They may rely on services. Some services are covering, you know, 10, 12 towns, more than that, you know. So the, when you look at the square mileage of coverage like that in rural Vermont, that's a huge area. talks a lot about different things you know how the COVID reactions were education purposes um, you know development of the workforce there were some things that came out through the COVID system you know during the COVID years not the COVID system for COVID years you know as money has been handed out left and right good bad and different um, it allowed payments to be paid for people's schooling and things we've had a couple of paramedics that have been able to get their education paid for you know but that's after two hundred thirty thousand um, dollars but that's not the normal and that's going away you know and then the, the the cost of these classes and things come out of people's pockets individually and so it kind of looks at some of those those scopes and demographics overall of you know where the, where the impacts and the strengths and weaknesses but also the fragility of the the system overall so this is an 11 page document that we're just seeing for the first time now uh, what is it that you would like us to discuss i'm not asking here? to do anything with tonight this is only an educational purpose for you okay. it's something that we just received in the ems world that yeah. sent to us this is a legislative report just as you see it it was sent to the vermont legislator to look at and review as again they continue to look at and monitor the ems systems and the health of the system within the state of vermont so it's education for you to take home read enjoy throw away <laughs> Burn in the fire, I don't care. But it's just information we're passing along that's out there that you may not see otherwise. Was there anything in here that struck you as particularly useful for understanding your role in the community, your future planning? I don't think it's any different than what we already know. It's just kind of a correlation of it all put into one document. That, um, again, this, this isn't the first one of this kind that's been put out there. You know, they've been studying and looking at these things for years and years, but it's, it's just something new that came across the table, so I thought I'd share it with you folks to take home. And I find it interesting that it's passed, they say years of inadequate reimbursement for services rendered unreliable levels of local, state, and federal support, and the pressure of the global pandemic have pushed out the fragile system of those who serve our, com our communities to the point of crisis. It's only a matter of time before a predominantly rural EMS system suffers interruptions that immediately, you know, immediately affecting personal safety, et cetera, et cetera. That, that kind of... What page? I'm just curious. That is on page three. On um, page four, four it says three. that volunteers are asked to pay between $800 and $1,500 to take an EMT or advanced EMT course. Is that true here, or does the department cover those costs? We cover those costs here, but in most cases, most people are paying that cost themselves. And the fire, is there still a fire academy? or? Um, there is a fire academy, yeah. right? And the and fire academy classes don't typically cost money. Get certified. There will be one here this fall. That we'll host, but. but is there a contribution that each community or fire department needs to contribute to run those? No, that's run out of the division of fire safety, so it's within okay. their budgets. <clears throat> so I'm not quite sure how to ask this question. So I may need some help from you. But um, I'm wondering. You mentioned that some other towns uh, are not being as supportive of their fire and ambulance services as we are in East Montpelier and Callis. I don't think I said that. No? Not at all. What I said was East Montpelier and Callis and our towns support our system strongly. It has allowed us to have a, a good sound system here. Robust. 
but nothing about any other systems in other towns. What I said was, there could be at any time for any of us, right? If East Montpelier was the example, if East Montpelier was to fail as an ambulance service, that punches a pretty good hole in the coverage here in Central Vermont, and was you know, and then somebody has to pick that up because those needs don't go away. Right, so then that burden then is loaded onto services that may already be burdened and <clears throat> running at max levels. So are there towns in this area that the taxpayers of East Montpelier and Callis are almost subsidizing because you guys end up going to a lot of calls there that you might expect their local service to take? Not for our primary coverage areas, no. Yeah. And your other towns that we covered with Plainfield and Marshfield are under contract services. Right. Right. They're paying for those services and yeah. then the revenue is still there <coughs> from the collections. Right. Okay. So my reflection overall in this, as I stated, was <coughs> we're in a pretty solid place of where we are. You know, we're not hanging on the cliff by a pinky, but. Mm -hmm. So this overall conclusion that the system is on the verge of collapse without adequate reimbursement or sustainable education funding, you, you don't think that applies to the situation here? I didn't say there's not impacts from some of those things here. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, and, it, and again, it's an ebb and flow in, in our system as in any. Right. I could be flush with employees six months out of the year and all of a sudden I lose three, mm -hmm. you know, and that may make me neutral. Um, but okay. we adapt and we move forward. And so it's a continuing process of effort to you know, keep our heads above water. Would, would you characterize the EMS service that you guys provide as being on the verge of collapse? No. Okay. No. Good. I, and I think I said that several times. Yeah. I think I said that we're. That's what it says for the statewide in this report. And I'm just again, wanted to make sure that that's not. That, that is, we did not write this document. That is it's, statewide. That is a concern because many organizations are at their normal operational level. They can handle what they have. Mm -hmm. But the problem is when all of a sudden. We struggle with getting one ambulance out. We need it. Mm -hmm. We call Berry City, and all of a sudden Williamstown has that same issue. Mm -hmm. They're going to call Berry City. Now Berry City becomes sure. out of service. Now yeah. who can come to them because Montpelier is busy doing something on their side. Yeah. And when you look at statewide, that's kind of a little bit of a red flag. Well, that so, really does it really does work as a system. They're yeah. not independent pieces. Right. There is a lot of overlap. I get it. So that's that's why they're saying there's overall concerns health. statewide at the top. Makes sense. You know? no, it does. Yeah. But the system does work autonomously when that happens, right? When you're calling and moving those pieces, it's they work in the structures in place. I can tell you who the next twenty ambulances would be to come in town if I need them. And our, our dispatchers have that same information, and they can automatically make those responses and requests based on what we say to them. So I think it's just some good reading, it's just informational pieces for you guys to take home. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's good. All right, um, the last thing is the uh, new engine purchase that we had approved, so we thank you guys at the town meetings for that. Uh, the manufacturer will be Toyn, our representative agent will be Shaker Lee Fire Trucks out of New York State. Uh, they're our, our dealership that we'll be working through. The proposed timeline is probably 12 to 15 to 18 months out before it would be delivered once we sign contract. Uh, we're ready to sign contracts now, um, so they're working on putting the documents together for that. The, as agreed upon in the town votes, was the towns of Callis and East Montpelier were funding 200000 of it. East Montpelier is funding 
the remaining balance at this um, juncture, the purchase price is uh, estimated at 425000 East Mount Fire is already approved for our loan. East Mount Fire Fire Department is already approved for our loan. Then we need to, to cover that once the delivery of the truck comes into place. Um, so that's kind of the estimate current costs. And then I guess the discussion for the two towns is the release of funds in ensuring that occurs within our current fiscal year so that we are not going in to have to do a repo. <clears throat> the truck obviously, I say obviously, uh, carefully, but right now predictability would say based on the markets and things that will not arrive within this fiscal year. There's question of even whether we can get a chassis immediately right now based on allocations of chassis to all kinds of vendors and supply and demand is just through the roof right now. So you're looking for your, I mean, I'm, I think I'm just going to repeat what you just said, Ty, but you're looking for the funds that were approved at town meeting to be released in, you said current, but you actually yes, mean the, the upcoming fiscal year. Right, it will be the, right, it will be, yeah. sorry, it will okay. be the fiscal year that's coming up when they're approved, to, so. And the FY 22-23 fiscal year, um, but the, the truck is likely not going to be here until the following fiscal year. That's, yeah, that's what it's yeah. looking at. You know, he, the, we talked to the vendor that you sent me an email actually this afternoon. He said, look, we built a couple of trucks in 90 days, which is not the normal, you know, but it was 12 to 15 months to get the chassis. So what's um, the model for funds to be released? Where do they, where do they live? Who, who earns the interest? Is that even actuarially sound or not, or not actuarially? Account, under account. accounting standards, are you allowed to do that? And I'm wondering if we voted in March of 2022 to uh, approve this uh, expenditure, are we obligated to expend those funds in FY23? Can we keep them on the books and We're spend them at you, Bruce. the following so, year? I'm not going to answer for Palace <laughs> because you're not using the model we use. Yeah. Our approval is good forever. Okay. Um, but it remains a select board uh, determination as to when and how to do it. Okay. Uh, but we did not have a allocation out of current funding yep. came out of capital reserve. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, but one thing we do need to keep in mind is that the East Montpelier Fire Department capital reserve use has not yet been approved. So when that still needs to happen, when you have your final figures. Correct. Right. Uh, that's what we were waiting on for that. Right. And that, and that actually, so we actually have the approvals for the loan to be totally outside of that right now to cover what we need to. And then we and then it will be the expenditure of the monthly payments yeah. going forwards on that note that we would look at. So we wouldn't say we went well, I guess collectively would so this using the example of two hundred and twenty five thousand, it would be collectively that, but it would be incrementally based on the loan payments over either a five or six yeah. year period. Ty, would you do me the favor of putting that in an email to me, please? Sure. specifically what you're asking for what it would look like and I don't even know what I don't I know enough to ask the question whether from an accounting standpoint that's even permissible but I don't know the answer so that's good news so the answer ask. is yes because we are not looking to take the money and sit on it in an account in East Montpelier okay private private we would take that money and apply it into the truck so I can apply money into the truck from the day of signing on and it, and it goes to the it would go to, to the, the vendor, to vendor. or okay. we can apply it into North Country Credit Union so we have options on payment installments we can make on the truck we have options we can pay just the chassis when the chassis arrives to them we have options we don't have to pay a penny until the truck delivery so what we don't want to do is get caught to a situation where we have to go back to do a revo on right this. I, I hear you I hear you and all I'm asking is that you Put the request in an, in writing so that I've only so I'm not middleman right. getting some detail wrong, and lay out what the options are as you just described them. If you would do do that, I would really appreciate it. Yeah, and I think the options are 
again, I can show you what they are, but again, it's what, you know, the different towns, how, if you move together, you move separately. Um, the town in East Montpelier is probably a little more fluid on being able to move theirs by just a vote at the meeting because the funds are available. You know, I'm giving you the heads up so that Callis has preparation time to, if you're taking, I assume you're taking a bond note, maybe you're not, maybe you have other sources of funds you're going to use for that purpose. So, um, when do you think that you'll be able to send me an email putting all of that in writing? Probably being tonight's Thursday night. It would probably be sometime early next week. Okay, thank you. Would you send that to East Montpelier Select Board as well? I will send official requests for both. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. So the other question would be um, if the monies are released from the towns and paid to the manufacturer of the truck, do the towns want to see a bond on the truck? That can be another question you raise in the email. So if that's something we'll yeah. we'll process as a board. Yeah, we have no power to decide anything. No, we're, right. we're not no, a board. I was just asking as a, a statement with a question mark. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what I would tell you is the bond will cost, you know, probably four to five thousand dollars to put a bond against the truck. Have you been seeing that? Obviously, yeah. we've never done it. So, have you seen that with other departments that have run into this? <laughs> You know, it's more, I think the, the influence of that more comes from town governments, of what different town governments feel and have the sense of. So not everybody's but There doing aren't it. that many in our situation. Right. So it, I don't know why we'd be doing a bond. Certainly Montpelier would not bond with Montpelier's fire department. Right. Uh, and I can't imagine a scenario where we would feel the need to bond right. an action of yours that we've approved. And we don't necessarily feel the need for the bond. I'm just putting it out there for yeah. you guys as a questioning statement of if you guys have a concern on the security of the payment to the fire truck company, you know, because again, we but can take Remember, yeah. we're paying for the damn bond that we're asking for. Right. So you're sitting there going, huh, why are we right. doing that? We basically <laughs> insure ourselves to the city, you know. <laughs> right. Because, because the other side of that, obviously, is we can take and secure the monies, right, whether it's in North Country Credit Union with our loan asset to purchase, and we don't pay them a penny until, until delivery. delivery. Yeah. And then it's 100% if the truck doesn't show, okay. You know, if they were to fold for some reason, we'd have no loss whatsoever, right, because we're still holding our assets. I don't foresee them folding or anything like that, but that's some of what people look at in the overall. Is it, what's the you know situation of the company overall and the company's solid and things so we don't have any question on that part of it um, but. The, the hard part here is without knowing the exact deal you're working with we right. can't see what your benefit is for prepaying anything mm -hmm. so from my perspective we shouldn't it's, be prepaying until we know it, there's an actual gain to it yeah well the, there's all <clears throat> you're only holding the money as long as you can as long as it's giving you financial benefit right as long as it's within it doesn't impact law around how we right spend on the monies on the you know the town end to me it's kind of logical to pay at of when on delivery mm -hmm. I yeah mean, to me that's so it's it's less than it's less than two percent of what the savings would be even if you were to give them the entire amount up front overall right so it's i don't want to say it's no money but it's small money at the end of it versus if you, so let's say if Callis takes a loan, right, and you take a loan today and the truck doesn't deliver for 15 months, paying you're paying costs. So what is the cost for that 15 months of money? You know, East Small Payer is in a different place because the money's in the account making some money, you know, whatever, yeah. less than percentage. <laughs> part of it. It's not a negative percent yet, but it may get there. Um, so, you know, so there's, so there's, you're right. There's cost for trying to do that, so the you know the end of the savings may not be that beneficial um, in the overall, depending on how it is. You know the same with us, right? If we were to take the note early on in East Montpelier, for the fire department, we're going to start paying 
notes, we're going to pay insurance costs and things like that going into it. So the, the cost may not be, you know, from what we're looking at, they don't necessarily make sense to incur a year before the trucks can be delivered. But again, you, know, you don't know what interest rates are going to be down the road. You know, they would allow us to be, if we do five years, we're at, right now we're at like three and a half percent. If we do six years, we'd be at a little over four percent. Next year, who knows? Yeah, and with inflation. But we're anticipating it to be, we're looking to do a five year note. Um, I think the other thing kind of tying us in and not trying to veer off too much, but back to that number three on there with the capital plan is looking at the possibilities and if you go back to your budget sheet on the, the um, second page when you look at the capital account, the, yeah, the capital account of having a 180,000 in it currently um, is to I think our goal is to pay off one of the trucks this year once this fiscal year ends is that we look at the capital and review that so we would reduce the indebtedness of one of the notes currently paying out of that capital fund saving the interest for the last year or so on that account. Um, sort of depends on what the interest rate you're paying is. Be very careful with that. Right. Because yeah. you're not going to replace it at the same rate. No. Right. No. Um, yeah. A lot higher. No. Right. So we're, we're going to look at that once, the, once we get to the end of the fiscal year and, you know, if that makes sense or not to do that. The bank hasn't required it to say, hey, we want you to reduce, you know, because you're carrying two notes right now with us, we want that note cleared up before. Obviously, she says that, oh, if that happens, that's all the better for them, but it's not anything that's required or anything to do. But we might have the ability to do it with the funds that are in there and everything. And obviously, those funds that are there, as you guys know, they're not making a lot of money onto them. But if we can reduce, you know, what the interest is overall, we're probably in that 3% range, I would guess, on those notes right now. So we might save, you know, a percent and a half, two percent money. Which again, it's not necessarily a lot of money. But, <laughs> so those are kind of thoughts on that. So we'll take whatever feedback you guys have on those. I'll send you the, the requests to release the monies. And the bond question. Yeah, the time, just the timing, the issue, you know, when. Yeah, I mean, I think it, what I told you was the best. He, you know, that's what he gave us in an email, and he puts four or five question marks after that. And, and it's just all depending on delivery of the chassis. And your and your your question, I I think is is less about wanting us to pay in this fiscal year. It's really you want. An assurance that the money will be there through whatever fashion we are able to pro offer that assurance without having to go back to the to the voters. Correct. I heard you. I heard you say without having to go back to the voters. Right. That's I don't want to get to a point where with you folks in Calus, to all of a sudden you guys have to go out and do all this paperwork and go through the meetings and meetings and work you know, six weeks of, to get through meetings type of thing to get that process done and approved for you guys to take out the note or bond right. for the loan, that you guys work that out ahead of time, have that ready to go. The money has to be ready. When, so, right. Yeah, yeah. So if I said to you, the truck's delivering in 30 days, I need that money, or if we were going to pay on the chassis payment on the front side, you know, and that occurs in 90 days, are you ready in 90 days to... Well, so that's the second issue then. That's the second issue from making sure that we have money in in the in FY twenty four. That's the question I heard first. Right. Is how how are we how and whether whether is a question whether we can be assured without going back to the voters that there will be the money in FY twenty four is one question. And then your second one then is and when it's time to buy the truck, it's time to buy the truck, and the money's got to be ready. Right. Two things. Well, it's easy. Because I don't, I don't want to sign a contract next week for a truck, and then have there be question about the monies that were voted and approved. It, yeah, it would be. I mean, there are two variables happening kind of simultaneously when you're paying for the truck, and 
which might dictate when they have to have when we all have to have the money available, um, and that seems to be up in the air because it's you're not certain whether it's going to be um, paying now or paying up on delivery. And I can I can do it either way. So if you give me a check tomorrow, I can give them a check when I sign the contract, and that money goes right into the truck tomorrow. So it's not a question on my side. It's really more of a question for your side of it. It's we can do. We can move it as fast as the money's there. What I'm looking to make sure of is that there's no glitch in the money once I sign the contract. Well, the money we're approved for the next there. as of July 1, right? That's when our fiscal, right. that's when the money is available and the new fiscal coming ahead. Right. And the, the truck won't be delivered in that fiscal, probably it's going to be in the following 24th. So with us, I mean, it seems to me like we would just, for simplicity's sake and not to go to the town I'm guessing we can't roll that forward without another vote so I'm guessing we would want to pay that money out before the end of the coming you know this fiscal ahead right so and wherever that went however that was paid paid against the truck or if it went into a holding account for well if it wasn't yeah and if it, a, if it does that where I mean, right. These are these are questions. Well, we put it with I, North Country with the loan. It would secure with them to be for the loan when the loan came through it to, and we approved paying in entirety. So if you guys say, hey, listen, we'd rather our money not go and be paid into the front side of this truck, and it, which is the same investment, then we would hold it in North Country with the loan readiness for the entire project, and we would pay as an end loan. Or we might hold it. Just. You know, Whatever, either yeah, way, right. it wouldn't However, as long as it's, as long as it's, long as it's released and doesn't become a, a, right. a, an issue down the road. We could hold and collect a little bit of interest if we wanted to. You know, we so, could. yeah, I think that we, I mean, really, we want we need to process the question as an entire board. Mm -hmm. right. So what, what's the difference in the contract that you would see in terms of paying up front versus paying upon delivery? Yeah, that's a good question. I like that question. You said three percent, maybe. You'd say no. It's one, one and a half to two percent based on the increments. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not a large amount of money. So it's not worth even really. Well, we'd say we'd lose. Because <laughs> yeah, we might meet as a board and, and decide that we would rather hold on to our money until the truck is ready uh, for delivery. But if we found that, it, you know, we get a twenty-five thousand dollar discount. If we paid up front, then we might look at it differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's not twenty five thousand. So can I just say one thing? This is a very weird way to go about this. We actually need to see the documents. Mm -hmm. I know. We, we need were, to have we're a waiting for plan. them to come in for the yeah. final contract document. And we need okay. to make that final decision as to whether we're gonna support the capital reserve use. Mm -hmm. Uh it, it, this is impossible to do in, right. in yeah. splitting off little yeah. pieces. Yeah. Yeah. We have to see the whole thing in one place. Mm -hmm. right. uh, and we'll okay. have those documents. What, yeah. I, what I wanted to get on the table tonight while we have the joint meeting and everybody's sitting at the same table is the need to work on this. How you guys work it out together or don't, that's between yeah. you, know, you, you two guys to communicate or you know, if one town wants to do one thing and the other town wants to do another, that's fine as long as we don't end up with a conflict down the road. I, but there's only going to be one purchase. It's either going to be up front or at the end. So that, so far, that hasn't been decided. It's looking like there's no real financial well, advantage to paying up front because the the savings or the incentive is one percent or two percent, as represented right. by you. So it looks like we're looking at paying on delivery. So we're all kind of looking at the t same time frame. And based on that time frame, you want a representation or assurances that both of us, both towns, will be able to deliver our share. How we deliver, how we get our, sh get our respective shares, that's up to them, that's up to us. Right. But we need to be able to deliver within what? 30 days, 90 days? Probably a 30 day window, I would think, would be, we would know before delivery of when that would be. Mm -hmm. So before signing the contract, then we'll continue to discuss this and we'll see the documents. 
uh, that Bruce was talking about, that the uh, options, and then we'll be able to give you uh, <coughs> approval to use the capital reserve fund and so on. Is that correct? Yeah, it can. Yeah. So the longer, so I guess you guys have are you guys looking to have a joint meeting of discussion between the two towns at that point, or is it? I, I don't think you need to do that. But again, if that's going to be the consensus of how do you come to you end pay or front pay or just each Ty, town just to says, make an example. In the past, you've always provided a set of documents that laid out the costs that you're facing. Right. And then the breakdown of how it was going to be handled. That's the document that showed what the capital costs were going to be and the best timing we can come up with. I right. mean, none of us have a clue. I mean, we just had our truck <coughs> pushed out three months. Not a whole lot of control of that one right now. Uh, are but you guys front paying or are you guys end paying? No, we're not going to pay until the end. Because yeah, nobody has a clue when yeah. it's going to be out there. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how the banks can loan on it right now because they don't have a clue. Uh, but uh, we've always had a plan <coughs> and actual hard numbers based on the loans you were looking at. Right. And we haven't seen any of that yet. We haven't even seen the numbers on the truck you're buying, the projected numbers. Well, the 425000 Right, you just put that out. number out there, but no, we never saw no, it on a, paper. That's a bid number, but again, it's, it's only every day. It, it could change. So right now, yeah. when we go back to it, so that I guess part of it is, so if this comes into a delay process where we hold this, that truck is going to potentially get more and more yeah. expensive as we go down the road. It, it may even so, after you so sign the contract, which is what's happening with the the mm -hmm. trucks right now. Right. Uh, we've already had two increases in three months. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so. And and whether and they built they built money into. This the truck the contract actually has five thousand into it to cover the incremental increases of the yeah taxes. yeah so so did ours because it, because they're <laughs> and we blew through that time. within the first month <laughs> right well that right, there's that, no win in this one time right. <laughs> no I, I I get it well we just have to deal with it yeah because it's not a yeah well we but we, the boards need that preliminary information to right. then make their approvals so that mm -hmm. you, you have something. You have the right to do what you want to do. Right. Right now, you don't have it. Yeah, no, that, and that's what we're talking about. That's what we need to do yeah. is figure out what, how you guys want to handle it and do it. And I don't want a preliminary sign a contract without the agreements. That's why we want to have the discussions. Yeah. You know, I can tell you what the payments are based on what and what the savings are based on mm -hmm. the estimate that we had four weeks ago. You know, when they wrote, sent the proposal, mm -hmm. but. So yeah. just in terms of the timing, we have a meeting coming up on Monday, and then our, our next scheduled meeting is uh, first Monday in May. So it sounds like the, first, the main meeting would be the one that we, we take it up on if you're going to be getting to, to us early next week. Okay. All right, any other questions on the... Um, all right, a couple other things that I had in mind that I did not get onto this list, I apologize for that, is um, there's a couple of things here at the buildings we're looking at. One of them is a capital improvement on all of the lighting. We've got some light fixtures in our office, especially that are burning through bulbs monthly. They're burning out the system, so we've got some issues with all the ballasts. These are all originals. These are fluorescent lights, not LEDs. We've also got some parking lights, one that's totally out, the other ones that are running at 50% or less. Park, parking lot light? Yeah, because their longevity is just out. Um, we do have a, an estimated cost to convert everything to LEDs for this room, the, the main office, all the can lights that are in the hallways that are on auto sensors, and all of the bay lights um, to LEDs for, with including the heads out in the parking lot for I think the seventy three hundred dollars. The the heads in the parking lot are probably about a third of that cost overall. Um, right now with the rebates on the the fixtures, like the heads in the parking lot, we can save a hundred dollars a piece on those, which is twenty five percent of the cost of the actual fixture. On um, the rest of the fixtures we're saving right around fifty percent on all the cost of the fixtures. And and then everything in the the building would be converted to LEDs that are the main operational lights. 
there's only a few that would be left that wouldn't, but they're low usage light that we didn't feel was necessary to put in at this point. What was the cost on that again? Estimate it's 7300. 73, it was 73 with, with a, and that's with the rebates. Um, so then there's discussion of, you know, do we take it, we can take it from our capital. I know there's still a little bit of bond money left. Is, is that something we look at with the bond money? Um, the other component for the building side before we go off into the discussion maybe, out on the side where the dumpster is and where the driveway extends as you first come in with a trailer sitting right now, there's a patch of dirt right there that really is just a mud hole for us every year because that's where all the snow gets plowed and things, is that we would like to pave that connection. We actually need the additional parking spots um, and pave that connector between there. It's a small area. We'd have to dig the base, make a base under it, and then pave that section. That would give us a spot to park the trailer. It would give us a spot to um, park additional calls, especially on emergency calls if there's other things going on in the building. And things like right now, if I had the fire calls come in and everybody came in, there wouldn't be enough parking for people. But that would give us another four spots of parking over there that would be beneficial. I don't have the cost on the paving part yet. The paving guy is going to come out and meet me. We were going to do it this week, but it won't happen until next week at this point. So, so just put the numbers together, ask it as a, a bond use, okay, and you know, send them over to us, and we'll use the protocol we've got in place. Okay, and if it makes sense, both of those things, in in theory, could fall under that account. Okay, it'll pretty much strip that account of anything that's left. Does that does so follow up question then does I was wondering do you do you need our permission I mean this is your budget does no it's it's the bond remainder fund is actually in East Montpelier I see uh, it's our bond so the I remainder see. fund stays with it's us yeah the protocol for using it is that it had at this point it just has to relate to a rational purpose for the building uh, the trick with Callus is we would send you the documents. You would either say we have a concern about this or not, but the decision would be made by the East Montpelier Select Board. So it's it's bond fund from from the original. From the original, there was gotcha. leftover monies, and we gotcha. we burned through about seventy five percent of it. So but the proposal is instead of taking it out of a budget to. Go to the little slush fund. Bond. Yeah. yeah. There, there's no reason to hold on to that money that mm -hmm. that isn't designed to be a capital reserve fund for use down the road. Gotcha. So if there's some purpose that can, can be so put for these are reasonable uses for that. Yeah. So we'll so we'll so we in Callis will get a proposal that we can react to. Right, right. But uh, it's, yeah. Yeah, so we're just, you know, again, putting it out there for discussion pieces, information pieces. So if there's questions, now the time for, you know, if you need some other additional information, we'll put the proposals together, get them sent off and things. We're still gathering the, the cost structure on the pavement part of it. We have the light crews. Just for fun, have you asked Washington Electric if they do the LEDs for you out there? Uh, they've been um, very good. They did ours in their parking lot, which are our lights they put them in for <laughs> Even us. though it's DMP. No, that, that's actually Washington Electric. Oh, really? Uh, for GMP, right? um, managed. Washington okay. Washington. GMP isn't charging Washington. anybody for it. Okay. We think they're getting paid through the traffic light you know it's a GMP huh. um, billing. So VTrans <laughs> is probably paying for it. <laughs> okay. But we, okay. we've always okay. used Washington Electric to do the actual maintenance on them. Okay. And they do it for free. Uh, so. uh, we did not specifically ask them on the light heads out there. Um, we could ask them if they have some, you know, if they're willing to put them in. Just they a, can't hurt. Sorry. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm just on the pavement. I'm just wondering if um, if you considered or thought of gravel versus pavement, and would that solve your mud problem um, and utility problem? No, we want to we want to pave it. Yeah. It's a mud hole now. The gravel will eventually become a mud hole and things as well. So, yeah, the, that piece of pavement would be important. It should have been, it, it was a design thing initially in the building. It would have behooved it to have been pavement from the very beginning. But. You're thinking more like an impervious service versus 
Yeah. It's a pretty small area. It's a yeah. good idea. Man. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. <clears throat> yeah, I know. Yeah. It, co it collects right there into a retention ditch. So it's not free flowing out of there. Right yeah, now, so it's, it's, like it's the way it's designed. So. Retention pond in there, like a. Yeah, yeah, sort like of, a yeah. Rain there's, garden. there's a very yeah, little farther garden. out where it sits and percolates down to the ground yeah. and things there, so it's not a free flowing. You know, that collects actually everything all the way up through and goes into that holding zone from. It's good. Because it goes through the culverts in the front here. And, that actually has worked well. Yeah. yeah. It had no right to work as well as it has. Because right. this was a mud hole that we built in. Right. And for it to have held together for a decade already and without any real yeah, maintenance is yeah. pretty impressive. Mm. It yeah. was well done. Yeah, because we've got the drain that comes down the side that picks up the yard water in the back that's actually all of the roads, like the house of 14. Uh, and that goes into the ditch over on the same side that daylight's out into there. So. The only other thing um, was I just want to talk about burn, um, open burn complaints. That if the towns receive open burn complaints, please make sure that I'm aware of them. Okay. Um, and the one I can speak to in particular that from the other day, we arrived at a grass fire and the, there was the guy, the individual who started it wasn't intending for it to become a grass fire. It was, it got out of hand, whatever, where it went towards the neighbor's house. And the neighbor was irate at us because he says, I have called the town and complained and nobody's done anything. And the next thing you know, it, you know, uh, Jason and I are in the middle of one guy because he's headed to fisticuffs with the other guy and that told I warned him he would be arrested. And the other guy's like, Feel free. Bullet, and the other guy says, I will put a bullet in you. So we're in the middle of this. Yeah. This is what we've heard before, Ty. I and we've understand. had the health officer out there, the constable yeah. out but, there. But Those we are had two no heads jerks. Up. <laughs> <laughs> we had no heads up to, to arrive to the one guy right. We never knew he was burning out there until the other guy called and said there's a fire. I know. But he, he's like, hey, I called the town. So it, it would be it would be beneficial if the town to get those complaints. Let us know as a fire warden or whatever so that we can look at him or that we can just have a heads up because it was it was not a pleasant greeting when we do, pulled in. Do people actually apply for or request burn permits? Like they're yes, it's supposed to be. They're, they're, yeah. they're, they're supposed okay. to. I just... So this was an unpermitted, yeah. in a small fire pit yeah. style. I was about to say, it was a fire it, pit. It was an yeah. intention yeah. To, okay. to do what it did and get away from, Got you know. Okay. Um, but we, in East Montpelier, I as the fire warden, and the, the staff does go out and do inspections. We inspect the, all of our burn permits. Um, I but can't tell you what That's a state is. police issue that was happening there. No, I understand, but he, I think it, had it been something like he, because he had said he'd even made these complaints as far back as last year. Not about a fire pit. See, that's the trick. No. He was complaining about, about the open crash. Burning. crash. No, yeah. not oh. about open no. burning. That's what I'm saying. No open burning. He was complaining about trash. Being burned or? No. Yeah stored okay. in the, this is a, a we don't need to describe challenging spot. <laughs> well, actually, this is public information, okay. so it's not a problem. Uh, the complaints that come into us, we send the health officer out, right. usually with the constable in these kind of circumstances. If you can't get anywhere with that, the state police are called in, right. which they were in this case. Uh, but those are two guys that have no respect for any of us, uh, period. Uh, and it's one of those where you sit there and go, hopefully the state police has them on, on uh, their radar, because there isn't a whole lot any of us can do about it. I'm not looking for the health officer side reports, but if there was something specifically relating to open burn. Again, there was no open burn okay. anything. All right. That's why when you said well, it, we that, were was sitting the, there. that was the information that we were given on site. In, yeah, on we, we know the information because we heard it too. Okay, so Ty, yeah, you, about you, the worst info. When you say call it you, I mean, I take it for callous. We're going to be calling Greg, right? Not You, should, you should call Greg, who should Greg. follow up. So, like, if you called me in East Montpelier and said, hey, these guys are open burning, 
I will go look at those and then we'll look to see if they're burning trash and everything and follow up with it. Okay, so what we should kind of agree. Whether or not they get written a fine or not depends on the situations and things, you know. Um, I mean, this was an accident that occurred by burning some cardboard and things, but overall, the and again, it may have been misrepresented in the guy's anger towards us, but the, the guy was irate at us as the fire department if, that we did not correctly address this situation before for the burning. And it, the garbage aside, that was his accusations against us. So he came at my fire guys upon arrival with great anger that we hadn't dealt with this ahead of time. And then as it's almost burning his shed down and his equipment, the neighbor's camper, you know, it just fueled everything into wow. this rage of then, like I said, Jason Wong and I stood between this guy to stop him in the field, and I told him I would have him arrested because of it, that he was headed to go, you know, and then when the guy's behind my back saying, I'm going to put a bullet in you, that's not where we want to be in the position of when yeah. we could have possibly, <clears throat> I, I say possibly, in some situation, if it had been anything identified because of open burning previously we may have been able to do something it doesn't mean it's going to stop them from doing it but it would have at least given us a heads up for what we may have been forecasted to see please remember what you're saying you guys see a lot more than we do and you never pass anything on to us we did have a uh, open complaint that ended up with the state police but when you've got a neighbor who screams first, right. thinks second, and then another neighbor who doesn't appear to think at all, uh, which is the one that threatened the gun thing. Uh, there isn't anything any of us can do about it. Right. That, that was a state police incident right from the get-go. Right. Uh, and as I said, they've been called before for the, those two exact guys because the one that threatened the gun does some really stupid stuff, and the one that calls monitors. Uh, and that stuff is passed along. We don't sit on any of it. Um, but fire had never been mentioned before. That was a new one. Okay. Uh, we were kind of hoping the fire would take out the trash, because that was <laughs> the rats were the problem. <laughs> Hence the health officer. At least you don't have horses. So from my understanding, they were supposed to be familiar. I wonder if it's related. All right, anyways, that was it. I just wanted to put that on the table. Thanks. Any other questions? Any other desired information at this early hour? Not too bad. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So I'll look for a note from you early next week. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome.